welcome to my channel. Welcome to today's video. Today's video is going to be all about this Lisa Eldridge palette. This is the Myth palette, the more purpley one. So I did do a video of an overview of all five of the Lisa Eldridge palettes. So I will link that video above. If you're looking for just more of a quick video with swatches and one eye look, this video is gonna be a little bit more detailed on the Myth palette. So I'll be inserting in some swatches. I'll be pulling you in a little bit closer to do three eye looks with this palette. And then I'll be going over my final thoughts. So if that sounds good to you, make sure you give this video a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't yet. And with that, let's get started talking about the details of this palette. All right, so just like the other palettes, this does retail for 68 US dollars or 48 or 49 pounds. It does come in six shades and there are six different finishes within all five palettes. This Myth palette has three of the six finishes. So there are four velvet finishes, one top coat and one metallic. So this one here is a velvet. Here you have the metallic top coat and then these three are the velvet formula. I'm gonna throw up a quick swatch pick here and just go over them. So you have Noctorama, which is a velvet finish. You have Illusionism, which is a top coat. Very excited for this shade. Mauve Decade, which is a velvet, Faded Amethyst, which is a metallic, Victorian Trim, which is a velvet, and then Violet Stone, which is a velvet. So those are the six shades in this palette here. All of the Lisa Eldridge palettes do have these little poke holes on the back, so you can customize them if you don't like the color story as much, and it's very easy to do. You can just poke a bobby pin in here, try not to do this on camera, and also not break it. So as you can see, it just pops out very easily. So if there's a shade that you go through more quickly, or if there's a shade you just don't like as much, you can easily just purchase the single shadows on her website and replace it. As of right now, Lisa Eldridge does not sell the component, so you'd have to put it into a Z palette if you're not just replacing one shade, if you're trying to just curate your own little palette but I have a feeling with the demand that's been asking for the component, she will eventually come out with this little palette here to make your own little palette. Now, I did already do a full swatch and three looks on the Vega palette. I will also link that video above, but now that we've gone over the details super quickly, I wanna keep this video a little bit shorter since we're just going over each individual palette. I'm gonna scoot you in closer and we're going to do three looks with this palette. So for look number one, I'm not exactly sure what I want to do yet. The velvet formula you can apply with the finger, so I'm kind of thinking I'm gonna use this all over the lid and then deepen it up with this kind of plum shade and use the metallic shade here all over the lid. So let's try that. I'm really excited to use this top coat, but it's gonna wait, I think, until the third look. The first two looks, I try and do something a little bit out of my comfort zone and then third look just more in my wheelhouse more of my style but let's first go in with this lightest velvet shade and just kind of place that all over the lid here to get a nice base now between the velvet and the seamless matte i'm kind of thinking i like the seamless matte more the velvet isn't hard to work with, but it is just, I don't know if I found like the exact formula on how to use it quite yet. It works definitely best with a finger. So I'm a little nervous to see like now that I have this base down and anything in the corner here, I'll clean up at the end when I put on mascara, but I'm worried just how the other velvets are gonna perform on top that's where I kind of just start to get a little bit of trouble. I'm gonna go in with just a small blending brush. This is a Refer 13 and that really plum shade and just see if we can build up this outer corner here. That dark, dark purple, That's it looks almost black. So I think I'm gonna just save that for liner. In my first video that I did on the overview, I did use that shade. I actually thought it wasn't black at first. 
then I realized it's just a really dark purple. So if you wanna see a look using that on the lid, watch that first video I did. Yeah, see, the thing that I have with the velvet so far, and I'm only really, this is the second of the five that I'm testing, it just doesn't show up true to pan. And it's a little bit confusing for me. I'm very much a beginner when it comes to eyeshadow. I'm not mad at the color, it's just not what I was thinking. And then with that, it's also hard to build up. Like this is really the color you're gonna get if you want to get it more true to pan, you can't. <laughs> this is the color that it's gonna stick to once you try and build it up. For me at least, that's when I start getting fallout. I'm gonna go in with a brush that just has no product, kind of blend out the edge here. Now I do have to say, regardless of just like the complaints I gave about this palette just a second ago, I do these looks very quickly and I feel like they look like very complicated looks. However, they're always just very simple. So I do appreciate that about the palette. I'm really liking these all so far. I just also wanna point out the negatives to this. But now that this is kind of what we're working with, again, two shades right now, I'm gonna go in with that metallic and put this all over the lid. Kind of avoiding the outer third there because I still wanna maintain that depthness and I don't wanna cover up that deep plum purple there. Perfect, I'm gonna go back in with my 13. Just re try and build this up. But like I said, it's a little bit tough to build up. It's not gonna make it any deeper. It's just gonna kind of put that color back. This is what we're working with so far for lower lash line because I think that this is basically it. I think I'm gonna take my angled brush and go in with that really dark, almost black purple, this Nocturna shade. I'm gonna line my top and bottom lash line and then we'll use one of those shades to just blend out the bottom lash line so it's not too stark and smoky. I'm gonna go in with Mauve Decade now, just blend out that Nocturna shade. I can hear the rain, I don't know if you can hear that, but it just started raining very hard outside. You can't hear it, hopefully it's just relaxing. All right, so look number one, I think it looks really pretty. The reason I was most excited about this one is because I feel like purples really look good with brown eyes on top of purple just being my absolute favorite color. So now that we have look number one, let's go to look number two. I think for look number two, I wanna try and use more of like this fuchsia bright shade just still deciding like if I want to put it all over the lid with something on top I think we'll do that so I'm gonna take like a flat shader and just kind of pat it down Just like that. I'm not gonna be too precise with it because I'm gonna put one of the shimmers. I haven't decided which one yet, but I'm just gonna start to blend this out. Start taking it up a little bit higher, just whatever is on the lid here. And you can see just how much lighter it is on my lid and then it is in the pan. It really looks like a dark magenta, but it's so much lighter just on my lid. And maybe that's my skin tone. I don't know if on deeper complexions, it's gonna show up a little bit deeper. I'm gonna go in with Mauve Decade on my big blending brush and just now blend above that. There we go. And then I'm gonna go back in with that fuchsia, do my lower lash line. Hopefully this doesn't turn out too pink eye-ish. We will find out. There 
Now I don't know if I wanna use the top coat or the metallic. I really wanna use that top coat color. I think we're gonna do that because it'll kind of let the fuchsia shine through. I'm gonna use my finger for this. Ooh yeah, that is so pretty. Really just gives it like a glimmer. This top coat is very sheer but it completely like transforms. I love how this looks. Do you kind of feel like this eye's looking a little bit smaller than this eye? So I'm gonna just try and bring up the shadow a little bit to open my eyes a little bit. I do just have smaller eyes, so it's just something I'm self-conscious about, trying to make my eyes look bigger. Again, not a makeup expert. I did also go back in with that Nocturna shade and lined my top lash line and a little bit smudged it on my bottom lash line. So here we have look number one, as well as look number two. I am just going to apply mascara so you can see it completely finished with glasses on and I will be right back. And then here are the completed looks. I always think this looks better with my glasses on. So I'm just going to Put them on in case you also wear glasses. I wanna see what they look like. But I really like how both of these look. I don't think I would have liked this eye if I hadn't put that top coat on, but I have to say that it was easy to do. I didn't struggle too much. I just prefer how my eye looks on this side because I feel like it looks a little bit more open. So I am now going to take both of these off and we're gonna do the third and final look. Here is what I came up with for look number three. So in order to get this, I went back in with that mauve decade, that velvet, and I just used this with my finger all over the lid here. And try to make sure it was as opaque as possible. I kind of with the velvets, get like some patchiness in the middle of my eye. I don't know if that's just my lid or what it is, but it's happened with a few of the velvets now. So I'm just gonna use this as a base here. And then I'm gonna go in, where's my brush? With my blending brush and then go in with this fuchsia. And then afterwards, I'm gonna go in with this plum, what is this plum, violet stone and deepen up the outer crease. So I'm kind of just using this fuchsia one because I want just like a little bit more brightness. So I'm really just layering this even all the way to the outer half of my lid. And then that violet storm is gonna really just darken it up and hopefully like the fuchsia kind of just peeks through. So I only dipped in once here they do give like a lot of color payoff on your brush. I just don't find it, as I mentioned a few times now, true to pan. And I find it hard to build. Once you kind of get the layer, like that's what you're stuck with. I'll be going back in with my big blending brush a few times here to just blend out the edges. Sometimes going back into Mob Decade. And now that I have Victorian trim kind of everywhere, now I'm gonna take Violet Storm and just cover up a lot of that fuchsia because I don't want it to be too over the top here. I'm just kind of have it peeking through. Probably should have done this eye second because the hardest part is getting them to match. See, now that I'm putting in this Violet Storm, it's on top of the Mauve Decade, it's on top of the Victorian trim. Now it's giving me true to pan color. So just on its own, on my skin tone, it doesn't, but that maybe gives me hope that on deeper complexions, it does show up more true to pan and has a little bit more depthness to it. I'm gonna go back in, blend it out.
Then go back in with Violet Storm, and I'm gonna put this on the lower lash line. And before going in with the top coat, I'm going to get my angled brush as per usual, go into Nocturna and just lightly line my upper lash line. I mostly do this to just thicken up the lash line rather than like trying to just create heavy liner. I feel like that closes my eye off, but I do like my lashes to look a little bit thicker. And then I'm just lightly gonna Make sure that it's cohesive on the outer edge there. And then my favorite part, we're gonna go in with that top coat and put it all over the lid. That's really gonna tone down all this purple. And that's what we have going for look number three. Let me apply mascara super quick and I'll show you the finished look. Here we go with the final look. Now that mascara's on, let me add my glasses. And I quite like this. I mean, it's very purple. It's in your face purple, but I don't mind it at all. I think it still has a little bit of subtleness to it. So I'm going to scoot you back out and let's go over my final thoughts. So on to my final thoughts now. You know, I really enjoy these palettes, all of them. I'm gonna try and really stick to talking about the Myth palette specifically, but all of them are great. This palette is definitely more for the person who is a neutral lover like myself, but wants to venture into color. This, I think, is gonna be the perfect palette for you. It's not too much where it's just a bright rainbow palette that's very pigmented. It's those pressed pigments that are a little bit tougher to blend out. All of these blend out great. Now I do wanna talk about the formula because there's four velvets, one top coat, and we'll just get this out of the way. The top coat is my favorite by far, and then a metallic finish. The main thing I wanna talk about is the velvet formula. Now I just, I'm still undecided. This is the second like in-depth review I've done on these palettes. I still have three more to really make up my mind, but I just, I'm, I'm iffy if I like the velvet or not. I like it as a one and done shadow, but I find that when you put them on top of each other, that's where I'm having a little bit of trouble. Now, I did like all three looks that I came up with. I think look number one was probably my favorite, but I did achieve very easy looks. I just think that I prefer the seamless matte formula over the velvet. And I wish that this palette had at least one seamless matte, at least this like Nocturna shade because Nocturnal, Nocturama, Nocturama shade because really I can't see a lot of people using this too much other than liner or to really define it. It's not gonna be one of those first shades that you put down. It's going to be a layering shade. So I think that if that was a seamless matte, it would just make this palette a lot easier to work with. When you're putting the velvets on velvet on velvet, it takes a while to build it up. Now that's the only way you can get true depth out of this palette is if you build up the velvets. If you have the velvet on its own, one layer, like you saw with look number two where I put this Victorian trim, Victorian trim shade all over the lid, is very light and sheer. Now there's pros and cons to that. You can like just a sheer wash of color, not want too much color, but if you're looking for true to pan color, you have to put this color on top of a velvet or on top of a different color in order to really get that. I am curious to see just how this 
formula works on people with deeper complexions. If you have any recommendations on channels that you know are reviewing these palettes, link them down below because I'd love to just follow more people who have a wider range of skin tones. I can also look myself, but if you recommend anyone, of course, let me know. And that's really all I have to say about this. I mentioned this in my Vega review. I mentioned this in my first video. I think that these palettes are either going to be ride or dies for people or people are just absolutely going to hate them. These are palettes for people that just want that easy, effortless look and it looks a little bit more complicated. I feel like I achieved that. I'm very happy with the looks that came out. This is not for someone who's very advanced with eyeshadow, who really like they use five or six shadows in every single look. They really blend and build that depth. I feel like this is just very beginner friendly. If you're someone who is just like a novice like me and wants to just venture more into color, I think these palettes are great. I don't regret purchasing these at all. I'm so happy that I did. Just you have to be in the right demographic to love these palettes. So really just think about that. I wouldn't go out and just purchase all five if you're on the fence about it. I would even just purchase some of her singles and see if you vibe with the formula before going in to buy a $68 palette. That's just where I would be if I was a little bit iffy on these. But other than that, if you're looking for something that's just very effortless, easy to blend, these are it. Of course, because I'm doing looks, I'm trying to use most of the shades in these palettes. But really, I think where this palette is going to shine is just using one or two shades, three max. After that, it's really just not built for that. I don't think this is a palette built to use every single shade in here. It's really made to make multiple looks out of these palettes with a variety of shades. So that's what I love about it. In the real world, when I'm just wearing this, I'm really gonna do three shades max, and I think that's what's perfect for it. Doing what I'm doing, putting on at least four or five shades, it just doesn't work as well, and I don't think that it works as intended. So those are just kind of my thoughts on this Myth palette. Please let me know your comments down below. Are you picking any of these up? The Myth one was the one that I was most excited about, and I have to say it did not disappoint. I think that I'm going to do the Sorcery palette next, so keep an eye out for that video. Make sure your notifications are turned on. But that's where I'm going to leave you all today, and I will see you all in my next video. Bye, everyone.